Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. It's Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC. Well, it's a beautiful sunny morning out there and a good day to delve into devotions in another parable of Jesus. So we're continuing our series and working through the parables of Christ to, to see the lessons, the wonderful lessons that are to be gleaned. From these parables and and today we're going to be talking about the parable of the persistent widow as written in luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 8 and in this particular parable um, jesus tells his disciples um, a parable that suggests that we should always pray always be in a, a state of prayer and never give up now he tells this story by saying in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow that in that town who kept coming to him with a plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is a, um, a very deep-seated parable with a lot of thought that I, I think we need to ponder this morning. Um, now, there's a principle that says, basically, if you're persistent with the pursuit of something, you're eventually going to get it. Now, there is a theology out there that basically talks about this. And, and with this parable, is Jesus saying that persistence in prayer suggests that God wants us, I guess, to pray with endless repetition and lengthy sessions of prayer in order to get his attention so that he'll grant our requests? Or is there a formula that we have to push buttons on and if we only could get the combination right, then God is going to answer our prayers? Or is Jesus trying to say something else? Now, in particular, this parable, uh, we, we need to see that Jesus was speaking primarily to his disciples. Now, there may be a broader audience, but his immediate focus is the inner circle of disciples, and he's speaking to them about um, trusting in God and, and, and bringing our requests boldly before the throne of grace. Now, there is a commonly held belief that once you pray for something, that you should not have to pray for it again because God remembers all of your prayers, so we ask him once and then leave it be. That's on the, on another um, plane of thinking. Um, for this reason, many people are reluctant to go to prayer meetings, etc. Well, what Jesus is saying here is that we should continue to bring our requests before God. He's certainly not suggesting that God is like this unjust judge who will grant a request just to get a person off his back. Um, but the reason for your persistence in prayer is, is not to remind God of your requests or to twist his arm a certain way so that he'll give you what you desire, um, but to remind yourself of your faith in God and your belief that he will answer your prayers in accordance with his good will. Now, that there is another principle in Scripture here where, that people wrestle with talking about faith of a mustard seed. And if we have faith of a mustard seed, we can say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and it will be done even as you have said. But is it God's desire that we walk around looking at mountains and saying, be cast into the sea? And if we certainly come to a point of faith where we believe that God will do it, even as, as we have said, that every mountain we pray for is going to be cast into the sea? I, I don't see mountains being cast into seas, at least not on a regular basis. That, uh, you know, I've heard of miracles happening 
in accordance with God's good purposes where he does something extraordinary. I mean, I remember a story of a missionary who's being pursued and his family are being pursued by people who wanted to kill them. And, and this is a true story. And they came to a place where they couldn't cross over a, a chasm and uh, they bowed their heads in prayer and prayed that God would deliver them from their circumstances. And when they opened their eyes, they were on the other side and their adversaries come up to the edge and they can't figure out why they're on the other side of the chasm. Now, I've heard of that, but there's also cases where Christians pray for God to deliver them and they're actually killed and they're brought into the presence of the Lord. I mean, we see that in the Colosseum and the Christians and the catacombs and the ancient Rome where Christians were captured and, you know, the, and they were killed. So is the difference, the Christians who were herded into the Colosseum, did they have no, not enough faith to believe the mountain before them couldn't be cast into the sea? Or, or is there another aspect at work here, like people praying for someone to be raised from the dead? Well, there's times where God has raised people from the dead. And then there's times where people have prayed for God to raise people from the dead and they're not. Is it faith that's the problem? Hmm. Is it persistence in praying that's the problem? <sighs> you know, this is a tough, tough question. Sometimes, yes, I think God, you know, when we pray, we're not praying, um, we're not believing, and, and we don't receive because we don't ask, you know, and, and if we ask, we're asking for the wrong motives. But sometimes when we ask for something that's not the will of God, he says, no, he says, wait. He says, sometimes he says, yes. You know, whatever the mountain to be cast into the sea is, I mean, maybe we're asking without God's eternal perspective, right? I mean, we've got to consider that. And when we ask, we don't always know what the will of God is. We're asking and we're waiting for an answer. And, and, you know, just because we're asking for something doesn't mean the answer is always going to be, yes, I'm going to give you exactly what you want. That's not what faith is. Faith is trusting in God. That's where the Lord's prayer comes in, you know. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. That's, you know, bowing the knee of a heart to God and, and waiting for him to, to answer. You know, like, I, I really have seen so much damage done to people with the wrong perspective on this. I mean, some people give up on prayer because God says no, or God says wait. But what this parable is saying is that God is just. He's not like the unjust judge, that if you keep pestering him, he's going to give you what you want. That's not God. He, he's your father, and, and he's going to give you an answer. But do we really trust him with the, uh, the answer that he's going to give us? Or are we unsure? Maybe we haven't done it quite right. You know, maybe we haven't added a little of this or a little of that or pressed the right buttons or... No, that's not how God is at all. God is a good, loving Father. He's not asking us to dance a jig a certain way and if we do it a certain way, He's going to give us what we want. It's not about getting what we want. It's about Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, maybe you'll come up to some circumstance and God's going to ask you to pray for someone. And... You know, I, I would venture to say there may be a circumstance somewhere along the line where God asks us to pray that someone would be raised from the dead. But he's not going to raise someone from the dead unless it's in accordance with his long-term purpose. You know, it's appointed unto a person who wants to die. I mean, we all have a time where we face, you know, death. Well, last week we talked about Lazarus. I mean, God raise Lazarus from the dead. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. I've heard of other people praying um, in the modern day where people have been raised from the dead. Legitimately, it's documented. Sometimes, you know, like, I mean, we look at the apostles. They prayed for people and they were raised from the dead. But uh, those same people that were raised from the dead die again. It's not like God gave them the holy grail of life for, for etern eternal health in this body. I mean, this frame is passing away and each of us has a time where we pass away. And maybe God allows someone to die uh, at a young age because he's got an eternal perspective. Maybe he knows that that person, um, it was their time because it was, the, uh, it was the right time to transition. I think we have such a, 
a shallow view of eternal things. I mean, a lot of us are grasping at straws, trying to keep our bodies from breaking down. And, and we're living as though this is it. Well, this isn't it. This is just a transition phase. This is the time where we're, 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 we're uh, I guess God allows us to be uh, choosing whom we will serve. It's the time where the chaff and the wheat are uh, separated in the end, you know, and there's a, a phase in life where everyone's given this choice as to whether they will submit to God or, or not. This is why we preach the gospel, is because God desires to save sinners and he gives everybody uh, a chance um, to come to that understanding that they're sinners and that they need him and that they need grace. You know, and we go and we tell people that there's salvation in Jesus' name. This is because it's all about eternity. This is, you know, like, yes, in our lives, we are given a life to live and to be good stewards of our life and to, and to enjoy certain things in our lives here. But there's an awful lot of trouble in life too. We all know this. Well, does praying like the persistent widow mean that God's going to grant us health, wealth, and prosperity throughout life if we will only truly believe? Well, no, it's like the casting of the mountain into the sea. Sometimes someone will pray for something and, and it's not in the will of God, so it won't happen. He's going to say no. God has that cho choice to say no, wait, or uh, yes, sure, I'll do this. But it's always according to his purpose. When you pray for someone, well, maybe God has a purpose in, you know, saving a person or saving a group of people by doing a fantastic miracle. And when we pray, you know, thy will be done, Lord, but we pray with faith, believing that he can do that. Then God answers that prayer and, and his will is accomplished. People uh, are saved or his kingdom is established. Sometimes God answers our prayers to encourage us, you know, and to say, yeah, son, daughter, I've got your life in my hands. So when we look at this parable, um, you know, we're, we're looking at true faith. True faith is asking God, bringing all kinds of requests before him and trusting him. Trusting, yes, that he can answer those prayers in accordance with our request and truly believing that. Truly believing he's good. He's not like this unjust judge who... Uh, who is just, you know, this miser who doesn't really care about justice, who doesn't love the widow. He just answers her because of persistence. Our God cares about us. He loves us. He cares about justice. And he will see that it's justice is brought uh, quickly. Um, but our time frame isn't always his time frame. And his, his lens is, is eternal. A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is, is like a day. Like, we, we're impatient. You know, we want things to happen like this. You know, we want um, certain things to go a certain way so that we can enjoy our lives here and now. Well, God's like, okay, you know, I don't always promise you enjoyment in your life. You may end up living a life filled with trials, but in the end receive a reward. I think the scriptures talk about eternal rewards and about, you know, like even last week we talked about the parable of the believer who is laying at the gate covered with sores. And he was a believer and he was carried to Abraham's side. And he was given eternal comfort. Whereas the rich ruler, the rich guy that, you know, ignored Lazarus sitting at the gate, I mean, he uh, ended up going to hell because he didn't believe, he didn't trust the Lord. And he lived in luxury. So it's not about luxury and health you know god promising that and this that's false teaching that's just wrong god doesn't promise that everything is going to go smoothly it doesn't always you know the the beggar covered with sores had the dogs licking his sores and yet you know he's in paradise well god will take us into paradise and the rich ruler just because he's got everything going while well, he's feasting and and he's got all this health he's got all the best of everything and he's going he's gonna to stand before the throne of God too. And if he doesn't believe, then there's hell to pay. 
What am I trying to say with all this? What I'm saying is that this parable is not a formula. It's not a formula. We don't approach God like he's this unjust judge that we somehow got to twist his arm right and manipulate him so that he gives us what, what, what he wants. We got to trust him. He's, Jesus is saying, trust the Lord. Believe in him. Will he find faith when the Son of Man comes back again? Will he find faith? Do we really trust him even in the midst of our darkest circumstances? He's not an unjust judge. He's a loving father. And he says, bring your request before me. And there is justice in the Lord. He will see that things are done in accordance with his good purposes, with eternity in mind. We can trust that. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Bring your request before me. Trust me. When you ask, ask knowing that God has your best interest in mind and believe that he could answer and even intervene miraculously. Don't give up. Don't cease from praying. Jesus is saying, continue to pray. But realize that your father isn't like this guy in the parable. This is food for thought.